Writing rule for a sequence. Hello dear students, welcome back to my classroom. For today's lesson, you are going to learn how to formulate the rule in finding the end term in a sequence. Let us begin. Let's take a look at this example. We can see numbers 1, 3, 5, 7 where the next three numbers are missing. This is what we call sequence. But what is a sequence? A sequence is a set of numbers written in a special order by the application of a definite rule. Each number in the sequence is called a term. Here we have the first term, second term, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on, which is the end term. Here, we represent the number or the order of a term by a letter N. This means that the N represents the term. And each number or each value of a term can be represented by A1, which represents the value of the first term, which is 1. A sub 2 represents the value of the second term, which is 3. A sub 3, which is 5. A sub 4, which is 7. A sub 5. A sub 6. A sub 7. And so on, which is A sub n. This represents the value of each term. Now that you already know what the sequence is, let us try to find out and solve for the next three numbers of this sequence. If the terms of the sequence increase, it may involve addition or multiplication. Here, we can see that the sequence increases. Now what do you think? What should we do to number 1, which is the first term, to get the second term, which is 3? Great job! We need to add 2. If we add 2 to our second term, which is 3, we'll get 5. Next, 5 plus 2 is 7. Therefore, if we add 2 to 7, we'll get the next term, which is 9. And 9 plus 2 is 11. And then 13. These numbers are what we call the common difference, which is represented by small letter D. This means that the common difference is 2. Here, we can generate a general rule that for every term after the first is obtained by adding 2 to the number before it. Now, what if we are asked for the 10th term of this sequence? Let's try and find out. We can try to determine the 10th term of this sequence by simply adding up 2 until we get the 10th term. But that would take us so much time. What if we are looking for the 50th term or the 100th term? Are we still going to add up 2 until we get them? Now let us try to formulate an n term rule for us to easily solve for any n term. Here we have the common difference which is 2. And we already have the values of our terms. Now let's just try to observe and look for some patterns in this sequence. Here, for the value of our first term, we have 1. For the value of the second term, we can observe that we need to add 2 to our first term, which is a sub 1. And how many times did we add 2? We add 1 time. So that would give us a sub 1 plus 2 times 1. Now for our third term, we can see that we added 2 to the first term 2 times. So that is a sub 1 plus 2 times 2. Now for our fourth term, we can see that we added 3 times of 2 to the first term. So that is a sub 1 plus 2 times 3. We can see that we didn't add 2 to get our first term, which is 1. Now we can say that a sub 1 is equal to a sub 1 plus 2 times 0. Now let us try to formulate a rule by simply looking at some pattern. 
here we can see that if we subtract 1 here, we'll get the number of times we add 2. Therefore, we can generate our formula as a sub 1 plus 2, which is the common difference, which is letter D, times n minus 1. Now, this is our n term rule for this sequence. Now, let us try to get the 10th term of this sequence using this rule. Since we are looking for the 10th term, that means we are looking for the a sub 10. Equals a sub 1, which is our first term. 1 plus the common difference which is 2 times n minus 1 so here the value for n is 10 since we are looking for the 10th term so that gives us 10 minus 1 at this point since we have two or more operations we are going to apply the Jamdas rule since we have grouping symbols let us solve them first 10 minus 1 is 9 Next one is multiplication. 2 times 9 is 18. And now we have our last operation, which is addition. So that is 1 plus 18 is 19. Therefore, the 10th term of this sequence is 19. Great job! Now let's have another example. This time, we have the sequence 2, 5, 8, and 11. Here, we can see that if we add 3 to each term, we'll get the next term. So, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 3 is 11. Now, the next term would be 14, 17, and 20. Here, we can see now we have the common difference, which is 3. Since this sequence have common difference, we can use our n term rule that we used earlier to get the 17th term. Again, our n term rule is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Since we are looking for the 17th term, we have a sub 17 equals a sub 1 for the first term, which is 2, plus the common difference, which is 3, times n minus 1. Here, our n term that we are looking is 17. Therefore, that is 17 minus 1. One. Again, at this point, we are going to use the Jamdas rule. Since we have grouping symbols, let us solve them first. 17 minus 1 is 16. Next is multiplication. 3 times 16 is very good. It's 48. Lastly, we have 2 plus 48, which is 50. And now, that is our 17th term. Wonderful! Let's have another example. This time we have 26, 25, 24. As you can see, the sequence is decreasing. Therefore, it may involve subtraction or division. Now let us try. What should we do to 26 to get the next term, which is 25? Great job! We are going to subtract 1. So 26 minus 1 is 25. Minus 1 is 24. Minus 1 is 23. Next is 22. And lastly, we have 21. Therefore, our common difference is 1. Now, what is the 12th term of this sequence? Since they have common difference, we can still use the n term rule that we used earlier. So that is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. But since in this sequence, instead of adding, we are subtracting. We are going to change this one as minus d. Now let us solve. a sub 12 equals a sub 1 for the first term, which is 26. Minus the common difference, which is 1. Times n minus 1, which is 
12 minus 1. Let us use our gemdas rule. Let's solve first the operation inside the grouping symbol, which is 12 minus 1. That is 11. Next is, we are going to multiply. 11 times 1 is 11. And lastly, let us subtract 26 and 11, and that gives us 15. Therefore, the 12th term of this sequence is 15. Wonderful! Now, there is another way of formulating an n-term rule. If a sequence doesn't have the common difference, we can use counting numbers. Counting numbers are whole numbers but without zero. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Now, let's try an example. We have here a sequence 1. 4, 9, and 16. And the next three terms are missing. So if a sequence doesn't have a common difference, we can use the counting numbers. Here, we're just simply going to count the number of terms we have in this sequence. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, which is the end term. Here, we can see that if we multiply 1 to 1, we'll get the value of our first term, which is 1. If we multiply 2 to 2, we'll get the value of our second term, which is 4. And then 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. So here we can see a pattern. So let us try 5 times 5, we'll get 25. 6 times 6, 36. 7 times 7 is 49. And to get our n term, we can say n times n. Now we can see that if we multiply the counting number by itself or squaring counting numbers, we'll get the value of each term. Therefore, our n term rule here is n times n or n squared. So if you're looking for the 10 term, that is 10 times 10, and we'll get 100. And if we are looking for the 9 term, that means 9 times 9, which is 81. Great job! Now let's have another example. This time we have 2, 4, 6, 8. Now let's just try to solve this using counting numbers. Here we can observe a pattern that if we multiply 2 to the counting numbers, we'll get the value of each term. For example, we have 2 times 1, we'll get our first term, which is 2. 2 times 2, we have 4. 2 times 3, we have 6. 2 times 4, we have 8. Therefore, for our fifth term, we can multiply 2 to 5. That is 10. 2 times 6 is 12. And 2 times the seventh term, which is 14. Therefore, for us to get the n term, that is 2 times n. Therefore, our n term rule here is 2 times n or 2n. So if we are looking for the 10 term, that is 2 times 10, which is 20. And if we are looking for the 17 term, that is 2 times 17, which is 34. Awesome! Let's have another example. This time, let us try it with fractions. Here we have the sequence 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth. What do you think are the next three terms? Now let us try to solve this using our counting numbers, which represent the order of the terms. Here we can see that if we add 1 to the counting numbers, we'll get the denominator. So we have 1 plus 1, we'll get the denominator of our first term, which is 2. Therefore, our fifth term would be 1 6. For our sixth term, we have 1 7. And for our seventh term, we have 1 8. Here, we can observe that the denominator is obtained by adding one after the other. And the numerator in this sequence is constant, which is 1. Therefore, our n term rule here is 1 over 1 plus n. So if we are looking for the 15th term, that is 1 over 1 plus 15, which is 1 16. And for our last example, if you're looking for the 23rd term, that gives us 1 
over 1 plus 23, which is 1 over 24, or 1 24. Great job, student! Now, here are the things that you learned today.